We work for a cooperative, a winery in Argentina that is formed by nearly 500 uh, grape growers and that was established in 1940. So it's a 75 years old cooperative and it's in the, uh, in the Rioja province in the northwest of Argentina. It's uh, by the Andes and it's in the middle, it's an oasis in the middle of the desert. Does it really look like that? Yeah, and that's a picture of the wow. Fimatina. As a cooperative, we have part of our production certified as organic uh, grapes and organic wines, uh, but it's only a small percentage, maybe 50% <coughs> of the whole production is certified. But we know that most of our production is organic. Since our growers are small, they, they are between one, two acres, and maybe five, six, ten acres max. 85% of the growers are that small, they do everything by hand, it's family work, they don't use any chemicals or any pesticides. So the wines, you know, all wines here are not certified, but we got them analyzed and they are pesticide free. Late in the 90s we started exporting wines and our main market today is Europe. We work there in England with a cooperative in Manchester and with them we started working directly because we were selling them uh, through an importer for some years until we met and we said wow we are two we're both cooperatives we share the same principles and you know we're both struggling because the middleman is taking all the profit so from next year we start working together and, and so we did in, in 2006 uh, so almost 10 years ago uh, we certify the winery as uh, fair trade, all the growers and all the grapes and all the wines fair trade. We started selling directly to them as part of the fair trade program and since then we went from 5,000 cases per year up to 250,000 cases this year. And with every case we sell to them, they donate one dollar and we donate one dollar that goes back to the community. We, we choose a little village in the middle of the desert that is called Tilimuki that we just found almost by coincidence driving a car we, we got there and we saw the people there it was a small village, they didn't have any water water in the houses, they didn't have any any high school, they only had a primary school no uh, health care at all and, and we said okay that's the place that need the most help they were really forgotten people so we um, with this premium, what we call the fair trade premium, we um, we installed a running water system in the town. Normally, you found by you know by 150, 200 feet, you find normally you find water, and by 300, say well, it looks like there is no water. 400, no water, and then they say, okay, we go down to 600 feet, and if no water found, then we have to start all over again somewhere else. And the last day, and I remember that because I was there, uh, the last day when they were giving up, they found a lake, a huge lake, with sweet water, so pure because it's so down, so deep down, that the, the water is fresh and, and pure. And so we built this huge tank and, and installed in every house a running water system. And the next uh, project, then we were a lot more ambitious because that was we said, okay, in five years, four, five years, we can collect $2 million and make a really good high school. And so we started in 2008, uh, building in stages, different stages, the high school. And, and, and we inaugurated the school in two years later, the first stage. And every year we were building more rooms, more restrooms and more, and, and, and uh, Dining room and, and I don't know, it's dining room, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the children and lunch and, yeah. and breakfast. This year, 2015 in December, we have the first what we call promotion, where the first uh, children will finish the high school. And 33 children will finish the high school, and, and they all say they will go to the university. And before then, what they will do is finish the, the basic school, the primary. Primary school. primary school with 12, 14 years old 
and then they will get a job at the vineyards working in, in any vineyard and and you know with 18 years old they would get married have children most of the families there were like young people 28 30 years old with six seven kids eight children very poor with no access to education or health care and now only after 10 years that's already changing because the kids now with 18 they're going to school so they don't have time for uh, starting a family and they have no money the problem was that before they were working with 16 years old making money maybe you know drinking beer and, and uh, starting all too early with everything else and now we hope that they will go to university and when they will, they will start thinking about starting a family with 25 with a profession with a job and with a much better future in November we are starting in the same area we're starting a, to build a little hospital and we think in five years we can have again nearly two million dollars which is uh, enough to have really something really good in, in this area that will cover about 10,000 people uh, it's in the middle of five villages with no any access to to health care and here we are starting now we've got the first container today we started talking to Peg exactly one year ago so that was that really went very quickly we will do the same here uh, donate a premium per case and we will use that money to certify all the growers as um, organic they're all organic they they cannot afford to pay for the certification although it costs only two thousand dollars each but they cannot afford doing that we want to keep working in this village buying um, solar panels and, and green pumps for the water for the irrigation in 10 years we will have uh, organic fair trade and carbon neutral wines and the villages will be sustainable because the growers will be organic and they will have basically uh, solar energy sustainable lower cost and they will get a higher price for their grapes when the growers get older and and they retire the children are not interested in continuing because it's not so attractive but i think that with this project they will continue because it's, it's a completely whole idea uh, being organic and being sustainable is more really a long term long term view everything i've said so far is what makes a difference in argentina but what makes a difference here is that working together we can cut a lot of the middleman um, cost and be very competitive and very good very good value for everyone here the way we do it talking directly and, and cutting the middleman is that the winery can be happy with the price the importer and distributor can be the same company in one state like in here uh, that has uh, chosen empire to be the important distributor and make a very good deal with them they work for a very reasonable uh, margin that doesn't affect the sale and then the store can do a, a, a good profit so it's also good for for the other cooperative on the other end and the consumers can buy the wine for 6.99 and this wine normally the the way it is from the FOB from the winery cost will be a wine for 9.99 uh, retail so the wine is indeed a 9.99 quality but we can sell it for 6.99 when we don't sell the wine in bottle we have to sell it in bulk and when we sell the wine in bulk normally we have to sell it to brokers huge companies that pay that pay less less than the cost but for us um, it's still better to sell the wine below the cost than to keep it in the tanks replacing this those pieces for, for this business makes also a huge impact Another thing is that this program and this label is exclusive for cooperatives in, in the United States. That's not something we can, you will see in other supermarkets or in other stores that are not cooperatives. And, and every cooperative uh, can buy, regardless if, if they're going to buy five cases or one container, it's the same conditions, the same price, um, the same cost and the same retail price which is actually one of the principles of being a cooperative, that we sustain each other and that 
regardless of size, we all have the equal rights and the equal benefits. So it's uh, fantastic that, that we can do that. And, and I have to say that that wouldn't be possible without you, Weber Street Market, where everything started. And with that initial volume, we can also keep the smaller cooperatives what they need at the same cost. No, organic is very small. You need a brand, you need to invest in the brand, you need, what's your budget? How many millions you have to invest in, mag in one spectator and points? And you, we say, well, we don't have that. We, no, we don't have the money, we don't have the points, we don't have the one spectator contacts, we don't have the budget for the labels, we don't have big names on our labels. We have what well, we are. We are organic fair trade cooperative. If you care about that, you can sell over wines. No, we don't care. Okay. But you do care, so <laughs> that's, that's the difference. I think if this is for us, it's not only a, a, a marketing opportunity. Fair trade is much more than that for us. It's, uh, we have been fair trade always. Uh, it's just now we have certified it. But the winery has been always working with, this, with those values. Um, and, and this is why now maybe through you and through all the co-ops and NCG, we have a chance to develop business in a market that is uh, quite strong for cooperatives, 